All right, guys, it's uh, Daniel again with another exercise physiology lecture video. Uh, today, we're going to talk a little bit about muscle fiber types. Uh, these have uh, strong avenues into uh, muscle physiology um, as well as exercise physiology and athletic performance. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, muscle fiber types and how they kind of interact with athletic performance and uh, in the end we're going to talk a little bit about uh, whether you can actually change your muscle type composition so uh, if you're interested in that uh, please stick with me um, feel free to uh, like and subscribe if you're interested in these kind of videos and uh, we'll get started so the first really uh, important clarification is that uh, your muscle fibers are not all alike uh, some of them can contract uh, faster uh, than others and some may be more or less efficient so really what this means is if you were to take a muscle for example your bicep muscle and cut it cross sectionally and look at all the individual muscle fibers uh, some of the muscle fibers would look similar however there would be different types of muscle fibers and the types and concentrations of those muscle fibers would uh, afford that underlying muscle uh, the specific types of processes and um, underlying abilities that it has. Um, so next, let's talk a little bit about uh, how we actually test muscle. So this is done with a muscle biopsy, which involves removing a very small piece of the muscle tissue from the muscle belly for analysis. Um, the area where they usually take this sample uh, is usually numbed with a local anesthetic and then a small incision is made with a scalpel through the skin. Um, a hollow needle is then inserted and it essentially uh, a plunger is pushed through the center of the needle and what this does is it allows you to snip off a very small sample of that muscle. So it actually allows us to test muscle um, in humans and it is possible to do this shortly after exercise. I personally have never had a muscle biopsy and you have to get uh, trained pretty extensively to do a muscle biopsy in most labs. Uh, I know in terms of our actual um, uh, labs that I work in, uh, we don't actually do muscle biopsies uh, due to the invasiveness. Uh, it tends to not be something IRBs love to do. Uh, however, if you're at a facility that does do it, it is um, not necessarily super intensive. Uh, it's just kind of something you have to get the participants uh, okay with <laughs> in terms of the IRB approval. So these are the three main types of uh, muscle fibers that you can have. Uh, they're called the type 1 fiber and then the type 2A and 2B. Uh, this can also be referred to as 2A and 2X. Um, essentially, it increases in order of kind of speed and power, um, with type 1 being more aerobic, um, a little bit less powerful, and then it kind of scales up uh, through type 2A and 2B to the point where you have muscles that can contract very quickly with a lot of power but are less efficient and therefore fatigue a lot faster. So let's get into some of the more specific natures of these two types of muscle fibers. So these are some of the uh, specifics. For example, the first really pronounced description of the three types of fiber types are uh, slow oxidative, fast oxidative, and fast twitch. So this is kind of just talking about uh, slow and fast twitch in the beginning. However, uh, the type 1 and type 2A are both oxidative. This means it is capable of processing oxygen relatively efficiently and therefore um, they fatigue a little bit slower versus the type 2B is a fast twitch and it's glycolytic, which really means that uh, it's not going to be able to produce that peak power for very long. It's going to be exhausted relatively quickly. Then if we go into myoglobin, uh, it kind of makes sense uh, since type 1 and type 2 are highly aerobic and have oxidative uh, capacity, it makes sense that they would have more myoglobin. Um, just for reference, myoglobin is kind of like hemoglobin, it carries oxygen. However, myoglobin is specific to uh, muscle. And then as you would expect, the type 2B has very uh, low myoglobin content. 
Then you have mitochondria. Um, again, this is very similar to myoglobin with type 1 and type 2A, which are highly oxidative, having a lot of mitochondria. Again, mitochondria will process um, the ATP that is created through oxygen uh, in your body and your aerobic system, and will be able to process that uh, relatively efficiently. So you're able to have that power output from type 1 and then type 2A for a long period of time due to that mitochondria and aerobic uh, kind of power. Then, as you would expect, uh, that aerobic capacity from the type 1 and type 2A allows those muscle fibers to kind of continue to contract indefinitely or for a very long time versus that type 2B, uh, which is very glycolytic, not very aerobic, but can output a lot of power, will fatigue very fast. Um, in terms of the color, red uh, tends to be more for those highly aerobic types of uh, muscle, and that is because of the high myoglobin concentration, uh, the oxygenation of, of that muscle. And then a diameter type 1, again, uh, it's not really putting a lot of output, so as you can think, it has a small cross-sectional area, and therefore its contractions are not as kind of forceful and powerful as some of the uh, type 2 fiber types. All right, so now let's go into the type 1 fibers. Uh, so again, type 1 fibers are highly uh, aerobic, which means they tend to be for more endurance uh, efforts. They're fatigue resistance because they're capable of processing uh, oxygen aerobically. Uh, they have that high myoglobin to kind of help with this fatigue resistance and this high uh, aerobic capacity. They have slow contractions. Uh, this is because even though they can kind of uh, go for a long period of time, they're not going to be as strong. They're going to have a smaller cross-sectional area. Um, they also have smaller motor neurons, uh, which innervate less fibers. Uh, so this just pretty much means that uh, when your nervous system innervates these type 1 fibers, uh, they tend to be smaller uh, motor neurons, and this is because they're smaller uh, muscle fiber types and require less uh, contractive force. Additionally, they have a less developed OSR uh, because they're not as good and as efficient at releasing and kind of reuptaking calcium. So they're not as quick and as fast at kind of making those contractions. Also, um, kind of to show you on the screen, we have this dark color. This is what a kind of type 1 fiber might look like. It's smaller, um, and that dark red color actually comes from uh, that high myoglobin content. So then we have type 2A. Again, this is still aerobic. Um, it is a little bit faster. Um, it fatigues a little bit quicker and not as much myoglobin. Um, it has a medium motor neuron innervating it, um, and it gets slightly more developed SR, um, which means it's able to process that calcium a little bit faster. Then finally, we have the type 2B, which are really fast, don't have much myoglobin, therefore can't process as much oxygen, and also therefore have this lighter color. However, these are innervated by the largest motor neurons because of their uh, kind of high force output and high kind of bundling of neurons. They also have a very developed SR due to their need to really uh, release and reuptake calcium at a very quick rate. So in kinesiology, there are two really important principles in terms of fiber type firing. We have this principle orderly recruitment, and then we have the size principle. The principle of orderly recruitment is the fact that motor units are generally activated on the basis of the fixed order of fiber recruitment. Essentially, that they will recruit the small uh, type 1 fibers first, then the slightly larger type 2A fibers, and then finally the type 2B fibers. Then we have the size principle, which is very similar, which just pretty much states that um, the order of recruitment of the motor units is directly related to the size 
of the motor neurons itself. And as we know, uh, those more forceful uh, muscle fibers for type 2A and type 2B or 2X, they are larger and therefore um, they are recruited later on. So they kind of are synergistic principles, but they are important to understand for uh, future exercise physiology work and uh, classes. So really quickly, if you look at this slide, we have um, the muscle fiber type compositions based off the athletic endeavors of these individuals. And as you can see, these sports that are more aerobic, have a much higher percentage of these slow twitch type muscle fibers, as you can see all the way up here, you know, in the 80th or the 80 percent of uh, slow twitch muscle types. Then you have these world class sprinters and very highly, uh, or these more highly, uh, more highly uh, kind of fast twitch um, trained athletes for right here. And as you can see, their actual fast twitch type muscle fibers are actually closer to 80% and then the slow twitch is all the way down at 20%. So almost a kind of like 180 degrees change between a marathon elite uh, athlete and a world-class sprinter. So that's pretty interesting. So that kind of brings up the question of, is this something that you are genetically born with? So are you born to be a good sprinter or is it something that you can train? Yeah, so this question of changing muscle fiber type is uh, kind of a hotly contested and debated area of work. It's not really something that has been decided on and kind of uh, substantiated in the literature. I would say the predominant amount of research indicates that it is possible to change between your type 2A and type 2B fast twitch muscle fibers. However, there is um, kind of scattered evidence in the literature showing a conversion from type 2 fiber uh, to a slow twitch type 1 fiber and vice versa. There are some studies that have shown it. However, there are debates about the way they did it and kind of uh, if those kind of uh, conclusions are uh, well founded. So uh, there is a possibility that kind of changes in the type of exercise you do may change your fiber type composition slightly. However, uh, a large component of that muscle fiber type composition is based off of your uh, personal genetics. So that's all for now. Uh, I can see that the <laughs> length of the video is getting a little bit long, so I'm gonna cut it off here. Um, please like, subscribe, and comment on the video, any questions you might have, um, and uh, stay tuned if you're interested in other exercise physiology uh, videos in the future. Uh, so yeah, everyone have a nice day.